Hello, it's Duncan. Last week we introduced a simple Kotlin domain specific language to impose the given when then structure from Cucumber on our Kotlin tests. In practice, this DSL turns out to be a bit limiting, but by introducing some more types and making use of lambdas with both receivers and parameters, we can make it much more powerful. The result allows developers to write tests in a way that our business colleagues can read and understand without the pain of parsing Cucumber syntax from text files. Oh, good choice, the AI. We left the code last week at these loading updating stock tests, and we just developed this little DSL here where we can say given, when, and then, just like Cucumber, except these are Kotlin functions. Given is just the identity. It returns its one parameter, this one. When takes that parameter. Here it is. And a block that takes the receiver and makes it both the receiver and the parameter to the block. So if we go back here, this is effectively our fixture, that's this, or our fixture can be it. And in fact, I think here we can turn on the implicit receivers and parameters to see those types. I find those hints often get in the way of reading code, but I'll leave them on for today so we can see what's happening. We'll get rid of that. And then this then takes its receiver, which is the result of do load and update, and makes it the parameter. So fundamentally, that's just a let. Oh, and in fact, it is let. And our goal here is to make the test as expressive as possible. Now, sometimes to be expressive, we need to be explicit, and sometimes we need to be implicit. It all depends on the context, but often shorter is nicer. Looking at this test, the first one, we start with two instants, this last modified of the stock list that we're using, and this first instant to the next day, which is the time that we're going to be performing this action, this do load and update. And we set up this variable, this first instance of the next day, so that we can reuse it here, so that we can see that it starts here, gets passed in here, and ends up here. But actually, I think it would be nicer if we could just put in now there. So in other words, given the fixture now, then the expected updated result is a stock list that's updated now. If I could see the fixture in this block, then I could see the now from the fixture. But I can't, this block just has this parameter. So I think that in a when block, what I'd really like to be able to see is both the fixture, that's the one that's given here, and the receiver here, and also the outcome, or the result of the when block. But at the moment, it's only that result that's being passed through here. So how can we get what we want? Well, let's go back to when. And when makes the receiver and the parameter of its block into the thing from the given, and then invokes the block. So that it passes out to the result of the block, this R. What we'd like it to do is pass out both the receiver, the fixture, and the result of the block. So let's create a class of that. And I'm going to make a data class. I don't know quite what to call it. Maybe when, then, state. Now, it's going to be parameterized with the fixture type, f, and the result type, r. And so it's going to have a val fixture, which is an f, and a val result, which is an r. And now I'm going to make our when return this when, then state. So this is going to return a when then state given the fixture and the result type. And it's going to do it by creating one of those things with a fixture, which in here is this, and the result, which is block this. Now you can see that's broken the code in a few places. Let's go and look. Oh, well, that's the now that I broke in the first place. That was the first instant the next day. What else is broken? Well, it's having problems here with this then because this when is now returning that state object. So let's go back. And what we actually want is for the then, not to take any old f, but a when then state of our fixture type and some result. Now in here then, the this will be the when then state. So in order to invoke this block, we need to say this dot fixture let block. Now that seems to compile, but there's a problem with the R's here. We need an R and a second R for this block to return. So this is going to return R2. And now this wants to return the R2, and that compiles on its own. Let's find out where we fail. Hmm, this looks like this outcome isn't the type we think it is. Let's ask it. Ah, no, we're passing the fixture as the parameter of that then block. So let's take that out, go back. So what I really want to say in here is we want to take the block and invoke it on this dot result. Oh, I would have messed up the block. The block doesn't want to take an F. The block wants to take an R. And as if by magic, all the errors disappear. So let's see whether that 
is good. But going back here, what I really wanted in this block was the receiver to be the fixture. So that again, I could use the now from the fixture. Remind ourselves about the fixture. It has the initial stock list and the time we're using. Okay, so that isn't gonna work, but we can take this then block and we can give the block the receiver of our F. Then we need to say this dot fixture dot block on this result. And again, we're able to compile again and pass our tests. Let's see what we can do with that now. Now we're using now. I don't think we need this variable for the first instant of the next day. So we can inline that. And now it'd be nice to have the last modified and that one next to each other. So we can inline that one as well. How's that? Good. And now this stock list is being built on a time and some items. And the updated stock list is being built on the same items. And this stock list is being passed into the fixture as initial stock list. So in fact, I think we could say initial stock list dot items with quality decreased by, showing the provenance of those items more clearly. Good. Let's have a look at the next test. Well, I think we can do the same thing. We can inline that. And we can inline that. And now this expected not updated result is the fixtures initial stock list. So we can say this is initial stock list. And now this is just an explaining variable. Good. Now the final test, in this case, we use the fixture to set up a loading error. And now the fixture is in scope. I think we should be able to take this loading fails with and use it as the result there as failure. There's a little problem here because the fixtures loading fails with is nullable. There it is. So I think we're just going to have to bang, bang that as we know what we put in. And now this would be better named loading error and allows us to take out the this. Oh, by taking out the this, I'm binding back to that one. So let's inline that one, delete that one. Now you can see by the color change that we took to the fixture. And we should now just be able to inline that one. And now we've lost some items, but we know in fact the saved state wants to be the initial fixtures, initial stock list. Am I right? I am, good. If I'd been writing this test from scratch, there'd be a bit of a discoverability problem because this when here is an extension on any F. Now there are lots of those. If we go back here and cut that for now and then say dot, well, the AI is suggesting when, but it's looking at the rest of this file. In general, when would be somewhere down in this list somewhere. We can fix that by making this given return its own type. And in fact, the easiest way to do that is to say that this is an inline class called given. It's parameterized by the fixture type and it has a single vowel, which is the fixture of type F. Now you can see the compiler is complaining that that is clashing with that given function we've got. Let's just take it out of here, put it down there. First of all, we need to say this is a JVM inline class. Now we can delete that and we can make our when an extension on a given of the fixture type. And that then means that our fixture is not this, it is fixture in here. But we need to put that in the front as well. That is all good but in this case i don't think there's any point in having that as an extension so let's move it into here as a plain old method the f is part of our class so i can get rid of that and still good and i think the same is true for this when then state so we can move this extension into the when then state the when then will give us the f and the r so this is just r2 like that Let's test the usability of this by having two whens and thens. So I'm going to duplicate this one, and this is going to be load before and after midnight. So given a fixture that's been updated at the beginning of a day, just before the end of the day, when we load an update, then we expected a not updated result as before. Can we then say when? Well, now we want to move the time on. So I want to say now equals and I'm going to say it's the 10th at 000. Oh, good choice, the AI. And after that, then 
I expect that it will be updated, which is the code that we have up here. So I should be able to take this thing, the updated one, copy it from there and put it into our then block here. Okay then, our first issue is we don't have this when, but we can add that. Now when I ask it to be created, it's offering an extension function on unit. And that, I think, is because this then here is returning the last of this block, which is unit from assert equals. Let's have a look. Go here. Ah, yes, there you are. So I think it would be better if this thing returned the when then state of the fixture and R2. And so that would be when then state this dot fixture. And then the result is still that lot. Let's go back to our error. Now it's offering to create a member function on when then state splendid. Now, previous when, the one on the given, took a block of f and f, returning an r. So I think we'll make it match that. We'll say this is f, and this, I think, is going to have to be a different r. So we'll say this is r2. Okay, this also wants to be a when then state. Let's write it out, equals when then state, and the fixture is this dot fixture. And I think the AI has correctly filled that in. So we'll ask for the type, just to check. Good. Let's drop those down the line. Get rid of that. Find our next issue. Okay. Val cannot be reassigned. This val is the noun fixture. But if we allow that to be changeable in the fixture, then that would compile. And we're not seeing an outcome there. Ah, that's because we still need to do load an update. So when now is that, and then we do load an update. That then passes the outcome into here, so we can say outcome, and that compiles and passes the tests. And as I haven't seen anything fail, I'm just going to make sure that if I change that, we do get a failure. And it looks like what we expect, 40, 41, 99, 100, etc. I'll just undo that and see the test pass. Good. I hope you see now how these fixture classes allow us to manage test state and a little bit of Kotlin magic allows us to have readable tests where state is encapsulated inside this fixture and also passed from block to block. Maybe do load and update could just be replaced with load and update. And now we can switch off the hints to make it a bit cleaner. Okay, about another hour's work and I retrofitted our given when then into our acceptance contracts. This is what add item acceptance contract used to look like. You can see there's a lot of noise here around building a fixture and an app. Then we create a new item, add it, and then we can use the fixture to check the stock list. The new version is an awful lot less noisy. I've extracted a sample fixture here to remove some of that noise. And we're now left with this nice given when then structure that should allow Alison to look at these tests and decide that the system is doing what she wants it to do. There's only been one amendment to the given when thens, and that is that the given here has gained a direct then, and that is being called in our add items HTTP tests, where we didn't really want to perform any actions, we were just given a fixture, then we can make a bunch of assertions about the roots on that fixture. And it's worth remembering that these contracts, this add item acceptance contract, for example, is implemented by tests that talk to the app directly and via HTTP and with Playwright. So that if we were to go here and make show browser tests true and run all of our tests, you'll see the browser launch and things be typed. which gives us really quite a lot of confidence that things are working as we expect. On the subject of Playwright, there's a testing pattern called the screenplay pattern that I think might be useful in our tests, where currently we have to configure how to add items or delete them and so on. So I think maybe next week we'll look at refactoring for that pattern. If you'd like to see that, then please subscribe to the channel, like this video so that other people find it. And if you haven't read it already, I think you'll enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.